Okay, well, we're going to move back to the Middle East. Before we do that, we're going to go to the House of Commons. And uh, here is uh, a tweet from Andy MacDonald, MP. And it says, Tory Minister Andrew Mitchell tells me I should be comforted by the ideas of lawyers being embedded in Israeli armed units. Let's just have a look at this a little bit of video. Uh, to any reasonable and informed observer, the conduct of the war in Gaza by Israel contravenes basic international humanitarian law in failing to distinguish between armed combatants and civilians and using force beyond what is militarily necessary, offends against the prohibition of inflicting unnecessary injury and is wholly disproportionate. Over 100,000 Palestinians have now been killed or injured by Israeli forces in Gaza since last October. So whilst the minister relies on Israel being a democracy capable of abiding by its legal obligations when the overwhelming evidence is that it is not doing so, what legal advice has he received about the complicity of and the dangers to our country of failing to take sufficient action under the relevant treaties to which this country is a signatory to deter such gross breaches of international humanitarian law. Well, as I said, um, Mr Speaker, we do continue to assess Israel's commitment and capability to comply with international humanitarian law. Those assessments are supported by a detailed evidence base, conflict analysis, reporting from charities and NGOs, international bodies and partner countries, statements and reports by the Israeli government and their track record of compliance. And we take all of that into account in making the judgments we make. But I would point out to him that when it comes to targeting, when it comes to military action, the Israeli Defence Force has its own lawyers embedded in those uh, units and, and uh, in, in much the same uh, way of prudence that the uh, British military do. Uh, that is not something which you see in any other force in the region and it should give some confidence that they are seeking to abide by international humanitarian law. Okay, so before we get uh, Vanessa's thoughts on that comment that he's made, what is the situation with lawyers in the British military? Charles? Well, unless things have changed very drastically, um, in some senses he's correct in that army legal services would provide personnel, forward personnel, but into a perhaps a, a divisional or brigade headquarters. But the idea that they're going any further forward than that is, I'm afraid, ludicrous. And also um, to suggest that they would be able to influence the decisions of more junior commanders. I mean, first of all, there simply aren't enough of them. So I'm afraid what Andrew Mitchell says does not stack up in any way at all. Yeah, Vanessa, what, uh, that's the British situation. What's your thoughts on what he said about the IDF and lawyers? I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. In, in that kind of fighting environment in Gaza, um, lawyers or not, they will be carrying weapons and they will be partaking in the crimes that the IOF are committing against civilians that are being recorded on an almost minute-by-minute -minute basis. So, I mean, yes, it's entirely ludicrous. It also harks back to this idea that Israel is capable of investigating its own crimes against humanity. Has he not read the 84-page report by South Africa or even followed on social media? I presume he's modern enough to be able to do that. The thousands of videos demonstrating the IOF uh, sadistic measures taken against uh, Gazan children civilians, medical staff, etc. Um, thank you for that. Now, uh, just bring us up to date what's been going on with uh, Shifa Hospital. Yeah, well, I mean, actually, that's interesting following on from, from what we've just been talking about, because I wanted to demonstrate how uh, BICOM, the British Israel Communications and Research Organization, packed full of former IDF and uh, Zionist lobby influencers, um, actually reports on what is going on in the war. And the most recent uh, sort of big event is the fourth siege and attack on Shifa Hospital in uh, sort of central northern Gaza. And so let's, I, I want to see what, how BICOM put it out. And bear in mind, they claim that they have huge influence. The Guardian claimed in 2009 
that they are one of the biggest influences in the UK on the opinions of media, including the BBC on government officials, even um, MPs like uh, Andrew uh, Mitchell there. Um, and so let, let's just have a look. So they basically channel the IDF spokesperson, Hagari, um, who's claiming that the IDF is uh, operating in compliance with international law and against the Hamas terrorist organization. The claim, again, that Hamas is operating out of hospitals, which has been debunked on the third previous occasions, um, and using civilian infrastructure in a systematic cynical pattern of behavior, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, BICOM channels the IDF, nothing else. Um, they claim that an operation was planned several days ago to basically assassinate um, senior terrorists, meaning Hamas resistance uh, members. But let's have a look how Mondo Vice, again, um, a, a, let's say an anti-Zionist regime uh, Israeli media outlet, who talk about the real reason that Israel stormed Al Shifa Hospital yet again. So let's have a look at what they tell us. Um, which is very different. So the assassination was um, of Faik al Mahbou, who was the director of operations of the Gaza police force, nothing to do with Hamas terrorist forces. And in reality, um, he was in charge of the distribution of humanitarian aid that was being brought into Shifa Hospital, into UNRWA centers surrounding Shifa Hospital. And he managed to actually deliver a fair amount of humanitarian aid to northern Gaza that is uh, basically enduring real famine conditions through the, the lack of um, delivery of humanitarian aid by Israel um, and by Egypt. Um, so basically, they wanted to assassinate him. Now, why did they want to do this? What, what the IOF is trying to achieve inside Gaza, if we look at the final slide on, on what Mondo Weiss uh, basically point out, and, and this is in line with what I'm hearing. Basically, the, uh, the Israeli forces have been uh, civil society, all um, police security forces. Today in Nusrat camp, which is on the western coast, they assassinated another director of police forces and security forces there. So they're trying to create an environment of societal disorder in the hope that tribal factions will, will take hold and will create a fragmented Gaza that is easier for the Israeli alliance to control. So as Mondavai says, in foiling uh, uh, Mahbou's uh, pivotal role in coordinating the delivery of humanitarian aid to starving civilians in Gaza while restoring a semblance of social order to the north. In other words, the attack on al-Shifa was an assassination operation aimed at breaking down civil order it aimed to facilitate Israel's genocidal project and pave the way for total control over the area without resistance. The unfolding events of the past few days expose Israel's intention of engineering famine and contributing to social breakdown. It reminds us that this is not only a war against Gaza's resistance, but also against its people. Yes, thank you, Vanessa. Thanks very much for that. I, 